Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. If you've never been an Audible customer and want to see what they offer, just go to www.audibletrial.com slash Excelsior Journeys and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs, download a title for free, and start listening. It's that easy. Why Audible? Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, and entertainers. And with this free 30-day trial, you'll have your pick of it all. You can hear books of all genres, narrated by Jim Dale, Stephen Fry, Will Patton, Alex Hyde-White, Jeff Brick, Neil Shaw, William Demerit, and even a few by me, George Soroy. So go to www.audibletrial.com slash Excelsior Journeys and start your own 30-day journey with Audible today. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of the award-winning podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire, and you're listening to the Excelsior Journeys with George Soroy. Prepare to ignite. Is there a burning desire within to share your creativity with the rest of the world? Do you insist on pursuing your passion by any means necessary? Then you are on an Excelsior journey, and you are not alone. Welcome back to Excelsior Journeys. My name is George Soroy. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for all of your suggestions, your likes, your comments, and your subscriptions. Love, love, love seeing the subscriptions on the Podbean page. And also, just in case you don't listen to your podcast on just Podbean, you can find Excelsior Journeys on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and TuneIn. So you got a lot of options to get over there. And also, I hope you keep in mind that on May 5th, this whole channel is going to become Winding Trails Media podbean.com and this is going to open the door for a whole lot more content that's going to be available to you seven days a week so i'm really excited about this new venture that i'm taking with uh, uh my partner in this david allen lucas we discussed this last week and if you are in the st louis area i hope to see you at the barnes and noble at west county mall on saturday april 27th from 11 a.m to 2 p.m my a loris publishing cohort uh, Rebecca J. Cox and I will be signing copies of both parts one and two of our books. We're both very heavily working on our part threes. She's doing a much better job of it than I am these days. Um, but, uh, but at the same time, we are both working hard to make sure that both of our trilogies wrap up with a really satisfying conclusion. So come on over to Barnes & Noble at the West County Mall and get yourself set up with books one and two. Take pictures. We'll, you know, we are there for your entertainment. So um, now back in 2018, um, I was, I was doing the second go around as a conference chair, in this case, a conference co-chair for the Missouri Writers Guild. And my uh, partner working on that, the vice president at the time, Richard Snelson, um, he had the, he had the task of basically finding some agents to bring in for the pitches, for all the people to come in and basically pitch to them. And also while they're at it, go ahead and lead a course or two, or basically do whatever they wanted because we needed to keep this budget nice and tight and the more people could do the better. And turns out that he not only hit a home run with the people that he brought in who were um, Amy, uh, Amy Brewer and Patty Carruthers um, from Metamorphosis Literary Agency, but I had no idea just how big a role that both of them would play in my life in the months to come because I reached out to Amy to get some advice regarding, uh, regarding some possibilities of Excelsior maybe going somewhere. We're not sure about, about that, you know, kind of in limbo regarding um, its future prospects. Um, and she had every answer for me and uh, just made me feel so at ease to the point where um, we, the three of us, were able to meet up again at PenCon uh, this past September, where they both officially offered their services as my agents. And you want to talk about a dream come true? That 
my friends, is a big dream come true. We always want someone, we're always looking out for someone to come in and kind of validate us, to let us know that we are on the right path. And that happens when people like Amy and Patty step up and basically invest in you. That is basically what they are doing. And I am so thrilled to not only to have them here, uh, to have uh, to have at least uh, one of them here uh, this week, and looking forward to hopefully chatting with Amy. Uh, sorry, and I'm looking forward to chatting with Patty here in the near future as well. Um, but uh, this was just as a little bit of uh, behind the scenes. I had a guest who was all set to come on here. Unfortunately, her audio wound up not working, so that uh, conversation has been postponed for a later date. But uh, Amy, once again, Amy Brewer bailing me out of, uh, of a tough situation. So um, I am thrilled to have as my guest here tonight, um, Amy Brewer, who is not only, an, like I said, not only an agent with Metamorphosis Literary Agency, but is also with her partner, Patty Carruthers, an author in and of itself. Uh, the two of them have teamed up to come uh, collaborate on a book called Texting Prince Charming, um, which is out there, You is out there available for purchase. And we're gonna be talking about that. We're gonna be talking about the agent's role as a whole. It's gonna be a blast. So without further ado, uh, without, you know, to uh, make a long story short, too late. Um, I am welcoming my guest for this week, Amy Brewer. Amy, how are you? I'm very well, George. Thank you for that introduction. That was very kind of you. Uh, uh, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you coming in on such short notice. This uh, this conversation that we had for her to come on the show was literally about ten minutes ago. Um, so you want to talk about you want to talk about someone who can step up at the last minute, and it's your agent. You, you're on the right path. You, you've definitely, <laughs> you've definitely done something right in life when this when something like this happens. So um, before we jump in and go to basically like go into your life story to, you know, to go all the way to the beginning. Um, you are hard at work at the, at Metamorphosis Literary Agency as well. So tell us a little bit about, th about Metamorphosis in and of itself. Uh, Metamorphosis is, it was started by Stephanie Hansen three years ago out of Olathe, Kansas. She had uh, in her career in publishing and being a writer, she just started making more and more contacts within the industry and then started sort of befriending writers and found that she could be a bridge awesome. and could actually provide to them a service of being an agent. And so she started Metamorphosis. Uh, we ended up coming on in 2017, we signed early 2017 uh, with Metamorphosis as our agency uh, for our uh, book, Texting Prince Charming. And it's actually the a book series, Texting Prince Charming. And, uh, and then we started interning with them after just a few months, because as you know, Patty and I are um, aggressive go-getters and yes. we are all about learning and absorbing and then putting it back out there and helping everyone else with what we have learned. So uh, after our internship, uh, we were uh, made literary agents and actually just a little while ago, we're made senior agents. <laughs> so there you, go. there you go. That's, that's great news. Kind of so, exciting. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, and it was great actually, not, you know, like not only, not only for everything that you and Patty did over at that conference, but um, I was so thrilled to see how well you were gelling with my friends that I brought in, Jerry and Geller and Michael Risco. Oh, absolutely. Um, They're wonderful. Yeah. And it was just great, like seeing them, uh, see, seeing, you know, getting to chat with all of you at the same table. Like it, it was just, it was the whole weekend was, it, it was all a blur, but at the same time, like I'm so I'm so thankful for everyone for stepping up and you know helping to make that conference a success. So, um, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and go back to the very beginning. I always like to find out from my guests when that lightning strike moment happened, when you decided that um, you were going to go in this direction as a writer, as a storyteller, and then eventually as an agent. Um, what was it for you that really got you going? 
Uh, I will credit Patty um, with this direction. I have always been a voracious reader, as have we all, and mm -hmm. uh, always thought I would lead more towards theater. And I know you've got some background in that too. I do. Yep. And uh, I mean, I was a theater major and uh, it just really, I sort of didn't see myself as a writer. I, it hadn't even occurred to me. Uh, Patty and I actually met 27 years ago in English class in high school. Really? <laughs> yes. Um, her, my uh, maiden name is Chance. So, and her name is Carruthers. I sat behind her because we sat alphabetically in mm -hmm. our Catholic uh, high school. So uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Taylor's class, he even gets a nod from us um, in uh, our book, because it, it's what brought us together because we had known each other a little bit, but we actually got to be friends then. Uh, you know, and then life happens in college and, and we come kind of, you know, talked a little but not much and uh, kids and husbands and all that stuff ensued. Well, about 11, 12 years ago, she and I were chatting and catching up and doing what old friends do. And she mentioned that she had been writing. And I said, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And we started talking a little bit more about it. And she said, well, do you, would you want to read it? And, and I'll be at the time she was writing fan fiction. She's going to kill me for saying this. She was writing fan fiction for Twilight. <laughs> Really? Okay. Yes. Now, now keep in mind that has been successful for others before. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just, she, she didn't go the, um, the 50 shades route, obviously, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, she was, and she was actually uh, on a, a, a fan fiction platform and had quite a bit of good feedback, but she had some other stories in mind that were outside the fan fiction world. And so she just started sending them to me. And I would read them and then we'd start, we'd talk about them and we'd just sort of discuss, hey, how can this change or get better or how can this plot work? Uh, that kind of thing. And we actually started a, a story together uh, called The Blood Reader. Oh, and, wow. and it's actually a, it's a young adult uh, fantasy. And we started writing it, what, 12, maybe 10 years ago now. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, the idea of you know a, a wonderful perfect YA fantasy and but mm -hmm. again kids husbands life all that happens yeah. and so sometimes we would go six months without talking and she or she would just send me a chapter here or I would say hey let's think about taking it this way or what about this that kind of thing well in 2016 in the fall of 2016 she said all right my my babies are old enough it's time to get serious are you, do you want to get serious and be my partner and, and write? And by that time, we had really kind of focused in the summer of 2016. We'd gotten together. We had talked about, you know, the book more and more and more. And I started seeing what I could bring to the table of, of this partnership. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, in fall of 2016, like I said, we, we decided to get serious. And so we worked we first of all we went out and we scoured the internet there is nobody better at scouring the internet or stalking other people via the internet than patty <laughs> she's absolutely stunning and i i am just both of us were just big sponges sort of what we needed to learn what we needed to do how we needed to get into the business of being writers mm -hmm. and so we focused on that and patty i focused on the business side and patty focused on the writing side all of the books on how to write and how to, to do it correctly and how to really I mean Stephen King is her god and and of course well, on writing on, on writing, writing is fantastic. Is her, yes <laughs> and uh, it, it, so we started moving in that direction and we pulled together a cohesive uh, manuscript we sent it to an editor we had it uh, we had it professionally edited and we decided all right let's 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 do it. And so we went to a uh, Kansas City writing workshop and met uh, our agent at the time, Jennifer, and, uh, and Stephanie Hansen also. And we mm -hmm. were so nervous. We were just yeah. like anybody at a pitch, pitch session. We were talking too fast. And I'm not sure if we actually said anything right or normal. Uh, but we found uh, common ground and they asked to see the full manuscript. So uh, once they saw it, they really liked it. Well, great. We knew we had some more work to do with it to make it uh, ready for 
uh, the industry for like the big time. Right. And in the meantime, we were growing our numbers on Wattpad with our cute little uh, candy bar of a story texting Prince Charming. And we call it a candy bar of a story. It's because angst, like kids eat angst, like candy bars, like they just gobble it up. And so <laughs> we, since we were writing YA, we decided, okay, well, we're going to build our readership, our platform on these delicious, angst-filled, emotional YA romances. But they mm -hmm. have, all of them have the hook of the teenager has a disability of some kind. Um, in Texting Prince Charming, Shelby has lost her leg. Um, and they don't really have a lot of YA uh, characters out there that are um, limbless. It's, it's mm. just, it, uh, it's a veteran sort of, you know, in, in the romance genre, there's veterans that are missing legs, but uh, to have a teen amputee, uh, I, we thought would just be uh, wonderful and that she can overcome um, all of the issues that go along with being an amputee and deal with all the issues and drama of high school at the same time. So that started rising in the ranks. Well, mm -hmm. our um, metamorphosis very smartly took note of that and said, hey, let's run that up the flagpole first. Nice. <laughs> and so yep. they, uh, they started shopping it and um, we had a, what well, we had an off, well, we had some offers by the fall, but we signed the day before Thanksgiving 2017 oh, uh, wow. for uh, Texting Prince Charming with Omnific, and it was released last June. And mm -hmm. as we, Patty and I move through the process, we continue to sort of evolve and change and move in what we need to do, especially as this kind of coincided with us becoming agents, um, because I do all of our social media, I do most of our um, outreach, um, all that kind of stuff. Our business side, I am the business side of a writer, because as you know, to be a successful writer, you need to be 50% business and 50% writer. And as, as many and as awesome as Patty is, she can't absolutely be every single thing. So I get to be that business side. And I'm also get to be a contributor, a, um, I'm a beta reader. And I, I, I get to, I get to sprinkle in all these little delicious bits because angst is my specialty. So Patty was always like, Oh, can they kiss here? And I'm like, Nope, they can't kiss yet. They can almost kiss. Yep. They can. They can certainly think about it, but they can't kiss yet. <laughs> so it's it's like the Jeanette Kahn thing from DC Comics. She said, you know, like what we do is we torture our readers, and the way to torture our readers is to torture our characters. That's exactly and, right. Yep, that is uh, that's that's something that I've always kept uh, kept in in mind for everything that uh, that I've been working on. And yeah, that's that's incredible, and that's a that's a terrific. Um, way to really just reach out you know like you knew what you knew what was going to work um and you knew how to properly spin it to something that wasn't in the same sort of cookie cutter shape that yes. you know, that, uh, that people were used to reading and so you gave them something new even though like it's something it's almost kind of like it's kind of like the matrix how you know like it it's a whole new world but at the same time like the core story is very yeah. familiar the, yeah, exactly. The formula is the same. The trope is the same even, but the hook is completely different. And that's how you make a successful, it's how you just bust into the business, whether or not, I mean, success has to do with m many other things, but yeah. that's how you break into the business. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, just, and during that time, during, uh, while, while that was happening with you, I was breathing somewhat because I had just paid off the last bit of the debt that we had from the 2017 conference for the Missouri Writers Guild. Oh, and wow. then it became like, yeah. And then right from there, it was just like, okay, it's November. We got to get something going for next year because we only have about seven months for it to happen. And the fact that uh, the Richard and I were able to pull it off, to, it's still to me like, you know, quite the miracle. Um, but, uh, but a big part of it is bringing you and Patty into the mold. And you well, guys and did. I was guys, happy. I was so happy to make acquaintance with Richard and uh, be familiar with his writing. And I actually was lucky enough to be one of his early beta readers for Little Minnow. Uh, really? Which, yeah, which will be released uh, 
I think probably next year because just as a friend, uh, since he doesn't really, he didn't really need me. He already had an offer for Little Minnow uh, mm -hmm. from a, an agency. But just as a friend, I offered to look over the the uh, contract form and make sure that it was acceptable. And uh, and he signed with them a few months ago. So hopefully, twenty twenty, Little Minnow will be out. But it was it was so fun just to get to know him and. And that he was he was so friendly and welcoming. It made it fun for Patty and I to go up there. That was great. And yeah, and everything that I was hearing from the attendees were just they were so thrilled with not only not only the um, the workshop that you guys led, but also with the enthusiasm that you led it with. And you know, like they, um, I had one uh, one attendee who was so excited about. Um, getting the kind of attention that she got from the first page reads, and yes. you know, and that was that just blew my mind as well. Just seeing that. Now, for those of you who are there, we um, for those of you who weren't there, we did a we did basically something right after lunch that's called the first page reads. I read as much as as much as I could of someone's first page with all of our writing professionals including our agents that you know, anyone that, who could, who could be there in attendance. And they basically let you know when they'd stop reading and boy, they, they were vicious. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> I was so thankful that I didn't have any of my own stuff up there. <laughs> because like, you, you know, like some of them, a couple of them stopped reading after the first line. I was just like, okay. But, um, but there was one, but it was at the same time, learning experience is what it was all about. Yes. And, um, and there was, I remember there was one in particular that I, I just kept on reading and I was just like, this is really good. And they know it's really good because I'm still reading. And so, and that sort of enthusiasm was great. It was infectious. We had, you know, like, yeah, it wasn't like the biggest crowd, but at the same time, everyone who was there was dialed in, was having fun and was totally invested. So, um, now, the one thing that I didn't get to experience myself because I was basically running around like a chicken with its head cut off, <laughs> especially when I was trying to regain the Skype connection with our agent who had dialed in remotely. But unfortunately, at that time, my laptop decided it was going to update at that moment. Oh, so, no. yeah. So I did just kind of like, you know, I was like, ah, I got this. So I have no idea how the actual pitches went, you know, like went. So without naming any names or any or anything like that, was there anything in particular that really stood out to you as something that um, people should do and people uh, that things that people should do and that they shouldn't do? Uh, should do is I always I it, genre word count. Um, you know, have your plot narrowed down and, you know, even time yourself. And then if you get through the pitch in 60 seconds and you've talked about your book, then you can take a deep breath and ask me questions. Um, try and get, because sometimes we wander as writers in our minds and we don't necessarily get out the important information. So I recommend you actually using your query or even your synopsis depends on how long you have for a pitch. Sometimes they're three minutes, sometimes they're 10, then you've got a little bit more space. But in a three minute query, um, read your synopsis, time yourself, uh, and try and practice getting the important information across uh, of the plot of the story along with your passion for it. We don't really need to know a whole bunch of personal information about you coming in. What you want us to do is ask to see more. That's really it. Then mm -hmm. after we see more and after we talk more, then you, we get to know you. Then it's a time for us to you know, be friends and that kind of thing. But when you're pitching, keep the pitch simple, just like you would mm -hmm. in a query. Clean, precise, whatever. Uh, and, and to the point, uh, uh, and let your agent or let whoever you're pitching ask questions because sometimes you forget, you're nervous, you're, oh, I forgot to say word count. It's okay. We are just yeah. people. We are just, you know, in our pajamas most days, reading and sitting in front of computers all over the country um, yeah. in, in this industry. That's what we do. Um, okay. So the agents and editors in New York are probably not in their pajamas. But they, 
several, in fact, most of this industry is remote these days. So Mm -hmm. don't ever think that we're not the same people you are or that we have anything that you don't. We just have more information. One of the reasons agents can be as picky and or choosy as they seem to be, because I know it's a very daunting task and it seems like, oh, they're never going to choose me. It's because an agent off a debut author on, if they can, if they sell your manuscript, they might make $75 total Mm. off their, your, your, as an author's first book. Mm -hmm. And that's if they put in 40 to 70 hours of work. So you're asking someone to work for a dollar an hour. (laughs) Wow. So if you it's one of the things you never really think about, you know, like, exactly. you know that's um, and and really like that that uh that agent, you know, like they provide that missing piece because I I you know you lose track of how many times you hear uh we do not select we do not uh, accept unsolicited material. Yes. You know, that's yeah, you know, and you need that last that last piece to connect one side of the bridge to the other. And uh, absolutely you know, where the agent comes in. Yeah. Well, and that is the, that's the, that's the challenge, but that's why agents act as a bridge is because we're just one more filter before you can get up to the big five um, and to get beyond. But we're looking at a tougher publishing situation right now as agents than we have in years and years because uh, the, the moving market uh, with mm-hmm. the f- flood of self-publishing, which is exciting in one way, but challenging in another, uh, mm-hmm. is making it, uh, you know, making all the other things smaller and smaller and smaller. And the outliers are skewing the market. Um, what I mean by that is nonfiction outsold fiction last year because uh, of Michelle Obama's book and Fire and Fury and some of those mm-hmm. major, huge selling nonfictions, which are awesome books and I value them highly. Uh, and I'm, but that makes it look like, you know, fiction is, is lagging and that makes editors and publishing houses think, Ooh, fiction's lagging. I should buy nonfiction. Right. So, but then, but then you see, then you see something like, cause I'm, cause you know, like I'm working, uh, now, you know, like while I'm, while I'm doing my freelance stuff with both my writing and my audiobook narrating, I'm also bringing in some money working part-time at Barnes and Noble. And mm-hmm. there you really get to see, um, really what's selling. And the one huge thing that's, you know, like we can't seem to keep in the store right now is, uh, Delia Owens's book, Where the Crawdads Sing. That one is huge. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, I did not expect that. And, I don't think anyone really expected that. But then all of a sudden she was on uh, CBS Sunday morning on yes. uh, St. Patrick's Day. Yes. And then all of a sudden we're going through cases of them. So Absolutely. Yeah, that, w- that's, that was the main thing. Just get yourself out there. You know, like as an author, you're going to make not only your, your life a lot, e- a lot better by doing that, but you're also going to make your agent's life a lot better by doing that because it's part of that. It's part of that, that whole, you know, synergy. That, that they have exactly. And sort of paying your agent the respect of, okay, I don't expect you to work for um, a dollar an hour <laughs> or yeah. more yeah, or, exactly. or, or less than that, depending on how many rounds you go through and how much shopping happens and all those kind of things. It's just one of those things in life that we uh, authors have a tendency to kind of lose the perspective of um, the reality of the industry, um, because we got we get caught up in reaching for that brass ring. Yeah. So we know what we definitely know what to do. You know, when when an author is ready to sit down and pitch pitch to an yes. agent. Um, but uh, I mean, there's always those stories of authors behaving badly, or yes. you know, authors just making you know, making mistakes that um, you really, you know, some, some sort of tactical error that's, you know, it's very much a no-no. Once again, without naming any names, because I don't want like, you know, exact, you know, examples of this, but what are some things that you would like agent, uh, you would like prospective authors coming in to pitch to you not to do? Uh, pitching in person, I actually haven't had very many issues. Um the only time, the only reason I couldn't, you know, I, the only time I've not asked for a fool is when it's a genre that it's not something that I, I represent or, or deal mm-hmm. with very often. Um, 
so it know who you're pitching, I think is yeah. probably the key. So if someone comes to me and sits down and pitches a horror novel, that's going to be an automatic pass for me. They could be mm -hmm. Stephen King pitching me a horror novel. I'm not going to read it. I'm not kidding. I've never read yeah. a Stephen King. I'm not gonna. I don't like to be scared. <laughs> it has <Right>. nothing <laughs> to do with your talent as a writer. So number one, know the agent you're pitching and make sure that they represent in your genre. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is super, super important. Um, knowing your genre is, is <laughs> knowing your genre is probably step one to that sentence. Yeah. Uh, and generally though, just sitting around talking about books is easy, easy. Deb Worksman, she's the acquiring editor, uh, at source books for romance, um, for commercial romance. She does th something called a, uh, stitch and pitch where mm. everybody just comes into a room and she knits and you can color or you can knit or you can just relax and you can just talk about your book. That That's is genius. It is genius. That is so I, relaxing. That is fantastic. And, and I, I have sort of adopted that from her. Okay, maybe I stole it a little bit. I don't knit. <laughs> So I try to sort of go, it's just a relax and pitch kind of situation. Let's yeah. hang out like people who've just met at a coffee shop. And I want you to just tell me about your book, yeah. you know? And, yeah. um, and I think, so you can't actually tell someone to let go of the nervousness because I don't think that's going to be, that's not a possible thing, but try not to worry about it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and find the right agent, pitch the right agent. Don't waste your time or theirs if they don't yeah. represent your genre. Um, you asked sort of what not to do. And let me sidetrack it a little bit from pitching into querying. Um, in querying, I got a query from someone who comped himself to God and to his, his book to the Bible. Oh, my. That's... <laughs> I was, I didn't even read any more than that. I just, I just hit delete. Cause that doesn't even, I don't even know. I don't know what that's about. What are you supposed to do with that? You know, like <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Aside the fact, I, I only represent like uh, Christian romances. So I yeah. don't know what I would do with <laughs> So I, I mean, unless I, there is romance in the Bible, but that's not what I'm thinking about. So yeah, yeah. It, it, it was so, so beware of um be wary of comping yourself to uh anything any outlier uh that is out there do not comp yourself to harry potter do not comp mm -hmm. your book to uh any of those things because those those again those are outliers those are not the norm find books that are similar to yours that have done well but mm -hmm. not, you know, not, they don't have, you, you know, you can't pitch me a, a book and say, oh, I am, I, my book is comparable to Nora Roberts that sold, you know, 6 million last year. Right. Because that's just, you know, in 30 years, maybe you can comp yourself to Nora Roberts, but right now, possibly, you know, be, so be mindful of, of reining in your writer ego. Mm -hmm. And you can say instead, my writing is in the same vein as Jane Austen, yeah. but, but with this, 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 and this differences, or mm -hmm. my writing is the same as Ursula Le Guin or in the same vein as Ursula Le Guin, or it has the world building of Ursula Le Guin mm. or something like that. But with the uh, emotional trauma of, Nora Roberts or something like that. So you can gotcha. use them as, as a framework. You can use big ones as framework, but don't compare your book to them because it's not going to come off looking right for any agent anywhere. Yeah. Um, and, and just uh, make sure, yeah, make sure you know your genre and, and really find the right agent again to query uh, because sometimes it feels like we're any port in a storm and they're just blanket queries and they send out 200 queries. They don't look, they don't care. Uh, and it's, it's the, the genre is so far out of anything that I would be interested in. Or sometimes we just get people giving us their life story and we don't even mm -hmm. know it, it's not the book they're pitching. They just want us to know them personally. <laughs> and right. that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't do anything. I, I'm, you know, I'm thrilled to, to know that, you know, 
let's say Ethel from Seattle yeah. has you know, chronic pain and has never used a computer until she wrote this book, but it doesn't tell me about your book. So mm -hmm. what you want to do with a query or a pitch is get them interested enough in your book to ask to see more work. Yeah. So keep that in mind for both things. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to. And um, I just remember just kind of from our experience, the fact that we were able to chat and, you know, get to know each other and everything before I had anything at all to pitch. Yes. I, wasn't, I had no idea that I was going to, that I was going to leave PenCon with agents. Um, but, uh, but that's, that's the way it happened. And I am so grateful that it happened because like I said, at the very beginning, like we always, we, we always crave that kind of validation, that, that spark that says, yes, you are going in the right direction. And it doesn't get any better than having professionals in the industry in which you want to break into, um, let you know that they want to represent you like that, right. that just, that's still, I mean, you want to talk about like a highlight of, you know, a highlight reel of my life that, that goes in there, you know, so. Um, Which is good because the chicken was terrible. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what can, you know, what can you do there? You know, like. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> it, it, it kind of, it kind of reminded me of, of the time when um, actually like when Cheryl and I had gotten married and we were at uh, the Adams Mark Hotel. Uh, which is named something else right now. I don't remember what, but uh, we had a, they had a fire in the kitchen that evening. Oh and so no. They had to, they had to scrap the stuffed chicken that they had planned for us and instead do some sort of like maple chicken kind of thing with like syrup on, on there. Oh no. And it was, it was definitely an audible <laughs> that, uh, that they, that they called. Um, I kind of liked it, but I know that, that uh, Cheryl was not a fan of, of the <laughs> Um, and, uh, but yeah, you know, like it, it's chicken happens. <laughs> that's, that's kind of like the way that I just kind of have to say it just chicken happens. Exactly. And it was a delightful lunch that we spent with you and got to offer you representation over and the chicken just was there just like at your wedding, a delightful wedding, a perfect marriage. And yep. the chicken just was there. <laughs> exactly. Yep. <laughs> and, and also, you know, just a, uh, just a big, you know, shout out to, um, to Rick and Amy Miles, who were the organizers of PenCon. Oh, absolutely. Every, every year, th those two just do just an absolutely remarkable job. I can't, I, I've lost track of how many times I've been singing their praises because the kind of, the way that they have tapped into the reader community is l unlike anything I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely um, fantastic. Yeah. And you know, they're just the voracious. The whole event readers. is just yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Like I, um, somebody, somebody asked me a, a while back, like, what's it like? And I said, it's kind of like the stock exchange um, because there's so much activity buzzing. It's going around because people are not only buying books like all around you um, and some, and in some cases off of your table, which is always nice. Um, but they're also, they're also walking around with different items for everyone to sign. And it just creates this wonderful atmosphere. Just like you're, you're part of something really big, you know, that, uh, that they're going to take and, and, um, and put up on their wall and, and admire and then wait for the next year so they can do it all over again. Oh, and uh, the wonderful sense of community, the writer community is absolutely yeah. wonderful there. The, the friends that the new friends that we made and the associations that we made, Absolutely. Well, well, you know, be lifelong. Uh, I think even just today I was looking and I, I'm friends on Facebook with like the six tables that were most near to us in Pentagon. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't be shocked if, if you guys were like friend requesting each other right then and there. Like at we the were table. actually sitting yeah. there at the it. table <laughs> doing that. I knew it. I knew it. So yeah, I mean, that's the sort of kind of feeling that that, that place has and that's, that's what we always want. We want to be like a part of that kind of community. And that's a beautiful thing. So absolutely. Um, so you've gotten to experience that on both sides of, of the table. You got to experience it as authors yourself and, and also as agents. So if you had to pick between the two of them, which, uh, which one would you, which one do you think you would go toward one or the other? In life, I'm a natural agent. Yeah. Uh, I, I love to write, I love, but I love more to participate in helping other people write. 
I probably, no surprise, have the insecurity of any um, person, any writer mm-hmm. <laughs> of, I don't know that my work is good enough on its own. Uh, mm. Patty kindly reassures me, but I'm still not entirely sure of it. And she's the only one who's seen just my work. Uh, so I feel much more comfortable supporting writers and helping them. I have always said that I am a bridge. Um, mm-hmm. Even before I, I got into this industry, uh, I studied, uh, I'm a yoga teacher and uh, I studied counseling for a long time. And I thought I'm, uh, I wanted to be a marriage and family counselor mm-hmm. because I'm very good at bridging the communication issues between men and women. Yeah, And that's something I've been doing since I was 10 years old, probably, is telling girls, well, this is what the boys mean, and telling boys, well, this is what girls mean. And, uh, that's and, great. And, and that's just sort of what I, one of the ways I thought my, one of the turns I thought my life would take. And, um, and then I was a social worker for a while. And again, bridging uh, people in the community and their needs with the services that can help them. And so this is sort of a natural extension of me helping writers uh, bridge into the publishing industry and connecting them with the editors and with the publishing houses that can build their careers. Fantastic. And yeah, and that's a a real, and I I can, I'm, I'm, Definitely, kind of breathing a sigh of relief there. Just like, okay, good. She's sticking that with the with being an agent. All right, that's good. Then. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, this is right. this is definitely this is definitely my purpose is, long, is to be haul. able to do it. And as I've been doing it now for oh gosh, almost not quite two years, mm-hmm. or been in the industry for almost two years, uh, I now have the connections and. Uh, the editors and and I'm getting to know have personal relationships with people and so I'm I'm forming stronger bonds and bigger connections with um with the editors out there so mm-hmm. that it's it's more easy it it is that's a terrible word choice it is easier, yeah, easier. for me <laughs> to connect the right writer with the right publishing house and editor nice nice I, I'm. So excited that we finally, you know, that that uh, that, we, that we've been able to, been able to do this, been able to sit down and actually, like, you know, talk about the business and everything, and talk about what it is that you're looking for, what it is that um, that you want, you know, like authors to, you know, to do and not do. Like that's that sort of information is going to be hopefully really, really valuable to all to all readers who are here. So. What I'm going, what I'm definitely going to do is I am going to reach out to all of my listeners. I'm going to ask them what kind of questions um, that may have, you know, for an agent. So Great. Um, hopefully, you know, like uh, with a little extra time in advance, um, I can let you know when we can have you back on. So that way we can ask these questions and really see like what else we, uh, what else we, um, what else we can know from you you know what um, absolutely i'd be happy to answer any questions that that come out sure and and have like you and patty on as well just like that would be that would be fantastic just to do that um so during that time during the time that we had um you know that i've i've known you um you know have uh having the opportunity to actually sit down for lunch and um as as everything unfolded the way the way it did um which, you know, like I said, big highlight. Um, so what, um, what do you see for metamorphosis like in the next, uh, say like couple of years? Cause from what it seems like that client, that clientele, it's growing. Yes. And that's exactly right. We are continuing to grow in agents and in clients. Uh, yeah. we have, uh, three new agents or not, no, they're not entirely new. They've been with us now for almost four months. Oh, um, wow. Jana and Leanne and Nicole, Mm -hmm. uh, and they are building their client lists and they are, uh, you know, taking on and learning and growing and doing all the things that they need to do. And Patty and I kind of help and, and, uh, guide and, and do sort of the senior agent thing now. And, uh, that sort of thing, but metamorphosis is going to continue uh, an upward growth pattern. 
uh, for as long as it can be sustained in this industry. Uh, it's going to depend, obviously, on, on the market more than anything. We have done very well because we have a, a motto, whether it's, I don't know that it's particularly metamorphosis, but I think it is. It mm -hmm. never hurts to ask. Mm. And, and, speaking of, and speaking of which, I'm actually, after, after we go off the air, I have a couple of quick questions for you. So, of course. Yeah, but so, yeah. the, the idea is there's no door we won't knock on. There is no one that is too high to reach for. There, because we're all just people. And mm -hmm. so we are there to, again, make that connection to possibly, you know, the either the president of uh, and CEO of an indie publishing house or mm -hmm. the senior editor at uh, Delacorte, whatever it might be. We are never we never hesitate to take those steps. We never hesitate to be the first person in the room with our hand out to say, hi, you know, I'm Amy Brewer from Met Metamorphosis. I, you know, would love to tell you about my blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's, I think that is, it's worked well. Um, I've made subtle deals. Uh, Patty and I actually have made several deals in the last several months and uh, have started sort of lining them up and knocking them down and uh, have more to come in the next few months and some, some ones that will be kind of nice. So it'll, it'll be, we're really seeing the movement now of, of all the hard work we put in because that's a, the hard part is patience. It takes yes. time. <laughs> it's a very yes. slow industry. Yes. Yes. That's a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a big, that's a big word of the day there. Uh, speaking as someone who worked for, um, worked from 2008 to 2017 on three different editions of one book and five years off and on on another book. And then, you know, like uh, I want to be in six years on the five part serial. And now I'm, you know, like, yeah, patience is the name of the game. Exactly. Uh, and anybody who reads Patrick Rothfuss will just be very familiar with the patience key. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, so, Here's, here's one question then, you know, uh, sure. kind of a question that just kind of popped into my head. So um, is there a way for, for people that are a little, little um, I would say a little afraid of querying, afraid of kind of like reaching out, but instead they want to kind of like put their work out there in a way that they would get an agent's attention? Um, is there something like that? Would there be something that, like that that you would recommend? Would there be something that that you do to kind of like look around to see if there were, if there would uh, be anyone that's worth representing? Uh, I actually, I think maybe contest is a kind of a nice way to uh, maybe garter a little bit of agent or editor attention. Uh, it's just entering contests without going through the query route. Uh, yeah. it, it, it definitely takes a little bit longer, but I actually judged for, um, Chuck Sambuccino's new Right Query Publish. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, and it's Right Query Publish, uh, and through Twitter, and he's starting a new I th at web magazine, and and uh, he had a lot of success at Writers Digest, and great guy. And I judged his uh, the romance contest back in February, and ended up pulling two full manuscripts from that contest. Wow. Because yeah, because I was I was so tempted by seeing their their first page. It it was that mm -hmm. good. So uh, and also twit pitches, uh, you know, play mm -hmm. on Twitter. Yeah, uh, the rejection isn't as much on. I think if you know if you get a rejection from an agent, it is not a fun experience to go. Oh yeah, yeah no, but. If you just get no, nothing on a twit pitch, it's more like, oh, okay, it's not the end of the world. It was, you know, 240 characters. It didn't work. Let me try these other 240 characters or whatever. And it, and it probably just had like a 90 second shelf life before, mm -hmm. before other tweets on other people's walls wound up getting, wound up basically drowning it out. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's such a, it's such a, like a, you know, it's a real thread the needle kind of, you know, kind of situation with that. But um, it's, it's a great way of, getting that, uh, that information out there mm -hmm. and almost staying a little bit anonymous while you do it. So if you're just a little bit too shy to go querying or if you're just not quite there yet, play mm -hmm. on all the different Twitter pitches. And then, because they have the pre-pitches the day before where people will critique the pitch that you give and mm -hmm. all that feedback, just absorb all that feedback as much as you can. 
So with that in mind, are you, um, as of um, April 2019, are you and Patty accepting submissions? Um, I, I'm sorry, because I know you totally caught me off guard with this, but we're actually not. We are editing book two of the Texting Prince Charming series as of Monday. I'm sorry. Awesome. No, that's good. That's, you know, this is, this is what I, you know, this is what we needed to, uh, we need to make sure that they, they know, you know, yes. so, um, we will, so. We will be opening back up probably mm -hmm. in July. Uh, we are Great. looking in the July area for opening back up. And we'll probably just be open for a little while again because we have to write book three in the Texting Prince Charming series. So yep. it's always a balance between being an author and an agent. And sometimes we just have to scale back on, on how many queries we uh, can handle uh, in a responsible way because we can get between you know 10 and 100 queries a day. I, I can believe it. I can believe it. And that's why I'm not wrapping this up and asking, um, asking you where our listeners can find you. Because <laughs> I'm going to let you guys do what you need to do. And we'll deal with, you know, like, uh, you know, deal with, re you know, reaching out to you and, and Patty in the, in the future. So, and, and and ants being able to answer any questions that they send in or whatever. And we would be happy to do that. But yes. Yeah. At the moment, we've got we've got to focus. <laughs> yes, and you by by all means do that. So, um, what Amy and Patty have been able to do is they've been able to you know pay, uh, chase their passions, pursue it, catch it, work with it, and watch it evolve. And because you know they started as writers, they you know collaborators, and now agents, and now they're helping to make other dreams come true while they're still working on their focusing on their own. So um, they have basically found the best of both worlds. It's a great story that, you know, like that I really hope that more people get to know. Um, and I, like I said, I could not be more thrilled to have Amy and Patty in my corner. Uh, I couldn't ask for, for better agents. And I am really excited to see uh, well, the work that, uh, that we'll be able to do together. We couldn't ask for a better client. Well, if you could just maybe write us a story that we could sell for you, that'd be a step. But well, that, <laughs> that I'm working on. That, that, that I am working on. I have, um, as as you as you know, I've gotten uh, you know I got I have um, one draft away from finishing up a children's book that I'll be able to get get over to you as soon as it's done. We are so excited. Me too. I'm I'm very psyched for for that. I'm thrilled for um, for the for the upcoming projects and. Um, there's the, the one that I, you know, told you before that I'm the sci-fi one that I'm oh, yeah. really in the process of cracking, you know, like, um, but you know, it seems like, uh, as soon as I crack that, it's almost like it's fix it Felix's hammer. Just like, just kind of, you know, comes back, you know, comes back together again. Yes. I just got <laughs> fun whacking at it until I get it right. So, um, so, but, uh, but you know, that's, like I said, patience, like you said before, patience is key and your patience with me is just practically Satan like. So, <laughs> so I hope that all of you really got something out of this. Um, I couldn't be more grateful to Amy for coming in on such short notice, ridiculously short notice. Um, and I am so thrilled to see what the future holds for, for her, for Patty, for Metamorphosis, and in a sense, for myself. Thank you all so much for listening. And please uh, reach out to me at georgehsaroy at gmail.com, spelled S-I-R-O-I-S, with any questions that you may have for Amy and Patty to answer in the near future. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a subscribe, like, review, share it, please. Uh, just sow the earth with, uh, with, with, as much, with as much love as you can for Excelsior Journeys and for Winding Trails Media. We really, really appreciate it. So uh, for Amy Brewer at Metamorphosis Literary Agency, this is George Soroy saying to all of you, ever upward. We'll see you next week. <laughs>